Michael Douglas portrays one of the most famous men in United States history, Benjamin Franklin. It's the new Apple TV Plus miniseries, Franklin. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews It. Welcome to my TV review for the new Apple TV Plus miniseries, Franklin. This uh, has the first three episodes up right now as of this recording, and uh, it's going to roll out weekly from there. And there's going to be a total of eight episodes for this one. And Michael Douglas portrays, like I mentioned, Benjamin Franklin. So before we launch into the specifics of this show and my thoughts on it, let me welcome you into Dan Reviews It. Thank you for finding this video. We do movies and TV reviews here on the channel, and uh, just about every day something new goes up. I always try to post something. So uh, there's always a lot to check out, always a lot going on. So please consider subscribing. Hit that like button and uh, comment below. All that stuff does, of course, help the channel out. All right. So this is um, basically uh, just talking about one specific um, sort of time period in Benjamin Franklin's life. He's already, um, you know, an older man at this point, which is why Michael Douglas is uh, portraying him. But it basically... It's about the years uh, that Franklin spent in France trying to convince uh, the, the king, Louis the Sixteenth uh, to support the U.S. in the Revolutionary War. Um, and there's, you know, it, it sort of goes back and forth between English and French. Um, you know, when he first gets there, Franklin does not know a lot of French, but all the French people are, are for the most part, speaking French. So this is definitely a, a bilingual series. Um, and it comes from the, it, well, in part, from the writer of one of probably the, the most well-regarded uh, historical miniseries of all time, which was HBO's John Adams, starring Paul Giamatti, uh, in which there was a portrayal of Ben Franklin as well. Tom uh, Wilkinson portrayed him there. But uh, the writer of that uh, was Kirk Ellis, and he co-writes here with uh, Howard Corder, who I'm not really familiar with. But uh, both John Adams and this based on historical fact books. Uh, this one, um, based on the book, A Great Improvisation, Franklin, France, and the Birth of America by Stacey Schiff. So it uh, sort of, uh, you know, her her book and this miniseries both kind of just encapsulate that, that time period. So we don't do really uh, a lot of flashbacks, you know, a, a few here or there, but uh, for the most part, it's it's sort of um, in that, that current state. Um, you've got Noah Jupe co-starring as uh, William Temple Franklin, uh, Daniel Mays, uh, Ludwig Sanger, a lot of uh, French actors that uh, I, I really am not familiar with, to be honest. Um, you know, really, it's just Michael Douglas and Noah Jupe that, that I'm familiar with. But um, so this takes definitely a more, um, I don't want to say jokey tone uh, than John Adams. But John Adams, you know, was very, very, uh, you know, straightforward, um, entertaining. Um, but this, I think, uh, is sort of hampered a little bit maybe uh by the current trend of sort of making everything a little bit more uh tongue in cheek and that sort of thing um and so sometimes it, it's a little bit too like clever or whatever or wanting to be too clever um and sometimes it is clever but i'm not sure that that's what the story necessitated although um this being 8 full episodes is probably a little bit long. Um, I, I can't remember exactly John Adams. I think it was only three episodes, but they were two hours each. So I think time-wise, that was like six hours. This is closer to eight. Um, so, all right. Um, and, and then the main part that I can say in sort of, I don't know if it's a full negative, but certainly a partial negative is Michael Douglas as Ben Franklin. Like, he does not necessarily look that much like him, um, partially because he's older than he's portraying. Michael Douglas, look, he's one of our great actors of all time, right? Certainly, you know, of, of this generation. Um, and he's, you know, proven himself time and time again. But, um, you know, he's definitely up there in age and he's uh, looking a bit more grizzled um, than I think Ben Franklin, you know, did certainly at, at this time period. Um, but more than that, it's the voice. He's Michael Douglas playing Ben Franklin. Whereas I think in other historical, um, you know, miniseries or movies or what have you, there's been a lot of cases where the person kind of really gets lost in the character. And I always just sort of felt 
well, this is Michael Douglas portraying Ben Franklin. I never, it never sort of leapt off the screen to me as Franklin. And part of that is his voice. I mean, his voice is iconic, um, you know, and, and it's also uh, in his older age, you know, a little bit grizzled. I just, I'm not positive that he was the right person to play the role. Um, you know, I, I thought Wilkinson did a much better job, albeit it was a smaller uh, role, you know, in John Adams, more supporting certainly the Ben Franklin character. But um, I, yeah, I just, it's, 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 it's okay. Like, it's fine. It's not a total negative, but it just never came off the screen as authentic that, okay, this is, you know, this is Ben Franklin here. Um, now, Noah Jupe, on the other hand, look, I, we don't have any real basis for what Temple Franklin, uh, you know, looks like or sounds like. Um, that's Ben Franklin's grandson who he takes to France. He basically, um, you know, kind of becomes his guardian, whatever. Noah Jupe, uh, you know, no notes for him. He's great as always. He's, I've had my eye on him since I think Wonder was the first time I saw him, but he's, he's shown up in so many things, uh, over the years. Um, you know, he was in, um, Ford v. Ferrari. He was Matt Damon's son in something. I forget what movie that was, but, uh, but anyway, so look, he's, he's great. No notes for him. And he has some of the more kind of tongue in cheek moments, um, as he's, sort of figuring himself out as a teenage boy, you know, he's falling in love with this French girl and whatever. Um, but he's also got a really good head on his shoulders. Um, and, and so his character is probably my favorite Franklin. I, I, I don't know what is, uh, authentic and real about this, um, show. Although I read an article saying like, yeah, this is fairly accurate to, uh, to what really supposedly happened back then. I mean, we, you know, None of us were there, so who knows, really. But um, but it's, historically, apparently, it is fairly accurate, uh, which is good to know. Because, you know, I'm not a history buff. I, I don't know a lot of the, this stuff. So, um, you know, if, if you're looking for a history lesson, okay, maybe, uh, you know, this could be a good guide. Um, but I think definitely some flaws here, too. It, it moves a little bit slower than I, I think it needs to. Um, and so they're they're kind of throwing in the more clever jabs and stuff. You know, look, Ben Franklin, I'm sure, probably was a quick wit, um, but I, I don't know if, if that is, uh, is what we really should have been going for with this. But in any event, I will leave uh, Franklin with a B, uh, you know, and it's just like I said, these first three episodes, because that's all that's up right now on Apple Plus. And actually, when I first heard that there was a show on Apple Plus called Franklin, I thought it was the kid from Peanuts, because they already have a show devoted to him on Apple TV plus they've got the whole peanuts collection and there is a Franklin show on there already. But uh, anyway, this is something very, very different. All right. Thank you so much for watching Dan reviews it and uh, we'll see you next time.